Hey everyone, in this video I'll be walking over day 15 of Advent of Code 2022. Now today was particularly challenging in my opinion, but I'll be walking through my full explanation and code. There's going to be a lot of diagrams and math today, um, so be prepared for that. If you want to see my code, that's going to be linked to in the description below in the GitHub repository, so be sure to check that out if you want to see all the details. And we're going to start first with a time lapse of me solving the puzzle. Okay, today's puzzles were the most challenging by far, without a doubt. So I'm going to go in detail about the explanations. It might ramble on a little bit, but there's a lot of moving parts to this, so I want to make sure I get all of them accurately. Okay, today is day 15, um, Beacon Exclusion Zone. And when I first read Beacon Exclusion Zone, I thought about last year's Beacon puzzle. It was um, day 19. So there were also beacons and scanners in day 19 of last year, and that was a pretty difficult puzzle as well. I'll link to my video about day 19 up there in the corner, so check that out if you'd like. But this definitely brought back memories, and I was really scared when I saw beacons and scanners. Whenever there are beacons and scanners, it's going to be a scary problem. Okay, but let's just go over the puzzle statement really quickly. Essentially, we are in the cave now, and we have a number of beacons and a number of scanners. Each um, scanner, or rather it's called a sensor in this case, every sensor um, detects the closest beacon to it. By the way, they're all laid out in a 2D grid, and we know where all the sensors and all the beacons are. Every sensor reports the closest beacon. Um, so actually, we don't get all the beacons. We only get the ones that are closest to sensors. So they give a good picture here. Um, where the S's represent the sensors and the B's represent the beacons. Every S knows where its closest beacon is. And the idea <clears throat> is that we cannot have beacons that are closer to a given sensor than its closest beacon. So it, for this sensor, um, labeled S, there cannot be any beacons within this diamond region. Actually, it's a square um, when we actually plot it out, but because it's like ASCII art, it's going to be stretched. Uh, there can be no beacons inside the square because it's already reporting its closest beacon is here. So this sensor um, tells us that no beacons are inside this square. <clears throat> so this is pretty standard so far. We just have a couple of exclusion zones uh, where beacons cannot exist. So in part one, we are asked to find, um, go to row y equals 2 million, and find which locations cannot contain a beacon. We are allowed to count um, locations that already have a beacon, so locations where beacons are reported, um, those do not count towards the total. Those positions can contain beacons. Also, one small point, um, it is important that there is never a tie. So two beacons cannot be the same distance to a sensor. That's not allowed. Okay, so for part one, um, there is a couple of ways to do this, but let me introduce my way. The idea is that we look at every scanner, we look at its exclusion zone and see its intersection with y equals 2 million and just have a bunch of intervals where beacons cannot exist in that row and then just uh, add them up. So essentially what we have is a picture here. Uh, let's say this is the x-axis, that's the y-axis. Um, there's this y equals 2 million here and we have a number of scanners which are going to intersect with that line. They're going to produce a small interval where beacons cannot exist because it's already reported its closest beacon um, somewhere on the boundary or inside. And we're going to have a couple of these regions, and they're all just going to intersect. And we need to find the number of locations um, that cannot have a beacon. So the total length of the union of all of these intersections. Okay, I'm not going to go into too much detail about my code, because um, if you want more details, you can check out the um, GitHub repository, which contains all of my code. It's going to be linked in the description. I'm just going to give a broad overview how, of how I did this, because I think the difficult part in today's puzzles was figuring out how to do things instead of implementing things. So I'm going to assume um, the syntax, the details aren't too important. So parsing the data, um, I just read in all the lines and then split it by spaces and then extracted um, the x and y coordinates of all the sensors and beacons using you know, string manipulation. So um, I'm just going to assume we have all the x and y coordinates of the beacons and sensors. Uh, we have this utility function here, which computes the distance between any two points, where the points are tuples, um, and this is just Manhattan distance. Okay, so what we're going to do is go through every single sensor and find the distance to its closest beacon. So we're just going to do that real quick um, just by using our utility function. And then we're going to go through all the sensors again and look at its intersection with the line y equals 2 million. Now, how do we do that? Um, let's draw a diagram. So suppose we have this line 
Um, I'm going to call its Y position capital Y because we want to be able to change this just for generality sake. Um, we have the sensor's X and the sensor's Y position. And we also know the distance to its closest beacon, so there can be nothing inside. Um, so the distance here is going to be, Manhattan distance, is going to be dist I, where dist I is the distance to its closest beacon. No other beacons can be on the border or inside. Um, so to find where this is, uh, we're, we're going to have to find the distance between the axis and each of these points. Now that's not too hard. Um, suppose this point is x comma capital Y because we know it lies on this line with Y coordinate capital Y. Um, it's going to have a X differential of, let's see, um, SX minus X, or rather the absolute value of that because it could be on the other side. And the Y differential is going to be Y minus SY um, absolute value. So once we add these up, we should obtain um, dist. So the equation we get is x s x minus x plus capital Y minus s y equals dist i, um, and from this we can pretty easily calculate what x must be. Well, there's actually two solutions, but basically what we get is x s x minus x is dist i minus that thing over there. So minus absolute value of y minus s y. Um, so s x is either this thing plus x or this thing or negative of this thing um, plus x because the absolute value. So what I what I actually did here was I just determined the possible values of s x minus x and we can just get that by doing the positive uh, and negative versions of this thing on the right and then I added that to s x to offset either left or right. Um, now the code for that is not too complicated. Uh, we just go through all the centers, do that calculation of dist i uh, minus the y differential to get the remaining x differential and put that in dx. And then we just have that interval from the left endpoint to the right endpoint. We add that to this list intervals. So now we have a list of all the intervals that are contained on this line that cannot contain a beacon. Um, and to process the locations, to process the union, uh, what I did was just find the minimum of all of those inter uh, intervals. So let's actually draw an interval map here. Um, this is again, y coordinate y. We have a bunch of intervals. They might overlap and we want to find the union. So I just looked at the minimum. This is min x and the maximum. This is max x. Uh, loop through all of them. See if that x coordinate is inside an interval by going through all of the intervals again. So this is pretty slow. It's like O n squared. Um, but basically, yeah, just go through all the x coordinates, check if it's inside any interval. If it is, then it's blocked by that sensor. Add one to the answer and then keep going. Um, so that's part one. So not terribly complicated, um, at least relative to part two. So let's take a look at part two. Um, thankfully, what I was suspecting was find the number of locations that could contain a beacon inside this, um, like at all. Um, or maybe not at all, but like the locations, the total number of locations that cannot contain a beacon. But of course, we're not going to do that because our goal is to find um, the distress beacon, which is not located by any of these sensors. So inside the square, we have a square uh, where X ranges from zero to four million and Y ranges from zero to four million. And we wanna find the location that could contain a beacon as in the place that is not like a location that is not already the location of a beacon and is not closer to any of the sensors than any of the existing beacons. Um, so the graph of this kind of looks like this. So here's what I did. Um, I graphed everything on Desmos. Yeah. So let's take a look. What I did was I printed out all of the X values of all the sensors, all the Y values of all the sensors, um, as well as the distances of all the sensors to their closest beacons. And what you can get is a sort of uh, coverage area for every single beacon and the equation to plot or rather the inequality to plot each of these squares is simply um, absolute value of x minus that sensor x plus absolute value of y minus that sensor y sum those together um, you get the manhattan distance to the sensor location um, that has to be less than or equal to the distance of that sensor to its closest beacon uh, and just plot all of those and that's the exclusion region for each sensor so there is exactly one point inside this four million by four million square that is open, that is not covered by any of these exclusion zones. It's really hard to tell from the Desmos graph where it is, so we're gonna use some code to help us, um, but it is actually within this region over here. If we keep scrolling in, um, the scale is going to enlarge. We're gonna find that point eventually, and we can see this point in the center um, is not covered by any of the exclusion zones. So that point is going to be where our beacon is. And that's a little bit of visualization. That's not a rigorous answer. So of course, we're gonna implement it in code. Okay, so the basic idea here is that 
Um, in order for only one place to be able to have a beacon, we need to have something that looks like this. We need something that like encloses it on the like left and up, something that encloses it to the right and down, and something that closes it to up and right and left and down. Something like this is going to produce a single square where there could be a beacon. And this is the only um, configuration that could produce a location that could have a beacon, um, like in order to make it only one square. Because if it's anything other than this, we're gonna get more locations that could have beacons. So the idea here is to get all of these lines and see which ones have distance one apart. Now what I mean is we're gonna graph all of these lines, or rather get the equations of all of these lines that are the sides of the exclusion regions. And then this distance right here has to be one. It has to be exactly one unit. Uh, more rigorously, it's actually going to be this distance over here, which is going to be exactly one. Um, but that's the idea. The gap between these lines has to be as small as possible. That's going to be um, exactly one to allow for one space for the beacon. Um, so we need to find the equations of all of these lines. And how do we do that? So let's take a look at one uh, sensor for an example. Okay, um, that's not a great square, but let's let's run with it. The location of the sensor is S X X Y S Y, um, and we know the distance to the Manhattan distance of any point on the boundary to the center is going to be dist uh, I. We're just going to call that D. We want to find the equations of these sets of lines. So the lines with the negative slope running this way. Um, this is not a terribly great uh, situation to draw. Okay, I just redrew them and wrote out everything. I actually forgot to record this part, so I'm just going to redo it. Um, we have the positive lines in red and the negative lines in blue. We want to find their equations. And the idea is that we have this positive line already running through the center of the sensor. And we just want to shift it up by D units to get this top red line and shift it down by D units to get this negative red line. The equation of the line po with positive slope that runs through the center is just um, SX uh, minus SY. Sorry, X minus Y is SX minus SY um, because we get like X minus Y equals something and that's going to have positive slope 1. That something is SX minus SY because this point lies on the line. Um, shift that up by D units, shift it down by D units, and we get the equations of these two red lines. Similarly, for the lines with negative slope, um, we look at the line with negative slope running through the sensor's center. That's going to be x plus y equals sx plus sy. And then we shift it up by d units and shift it down by d units to get that set of blue lines. Um, and yeah, now we have the four lines, which represent the sides of the exclusion zone. And again, a reminder is that we want to find when <clears throat> a pair of these lines differs by exactly one. Or rather, I mean, in our case, it's going to be actually two because we need to leave like a gap. It needs to look like this. Uh, where there's a gap of one here and then another gap of one here so that that center point can actually be the beacon. Um, so yeah, how do we actually record these inside our code? Well, we're going to need to distinguish between positive lines and negative lines because if a positive and negative line, like they don't really interact because they have to intersect. Um, we only care about sets of parallel lines. So we're going to record all the um, negative lines or lines with negative slope inside a list that records their, I don't know what intercept this is. I think, well, either X or Y intercept. Uh, and that's going to be inside this neg lines list. Similarly, for the positive lines, we're just going to store these constants on the right inside the pause lines list. Okay. Okay. You can see here, I did exactly what I just said. For the negative lines, we add um, SX plus SY minus D and SX plus SY plus D because this first part represents the negative line that runs through the uh, sensor itself. We just shift up and down. Same for the positive lines. Um, those equations are going to be X minus Y is something. And sorry, we shift it up and we shift it down by D units to get those set of uh, red lines. Okay, and now we, ac we can actually just do our bash because there's only going to be two times N uh, number of lines where N is the number of sensors we have. Each sensor produces like two positive lines and two negative lines. So all we need to do is go through every single pair of lines that are positive. Uh, that's this code over here. Look at their difference. If their difference is exactly two, then they leave a very small gap. Maybe a beacon could lie between there. Um, same for negative lines. If those negative lines differ by a gap of two, then there could be a beacon inside there. There has to be something in of this form. There might be multiple, but I'm assuming there's only one because these numbers are like, they look pretty random. And Eric, I think is nice sometimes. Just kidding, Eric, we love you. 
Um, but once we have that set of positive lines that are close together, we can record it inside this pause variable. And this neg variable is going to record the coordinate that is in between those two negative lines. Now notice how we do minimum uh, of those two coordinates because it could be the wrong way around. Um, and we just add one to get the center. So now we have the uh, uh, positive and negative lines that go through our actual beacon points. And if you take a look, that's going to be these two lines in my test, uh, in my input, 3 million something, 3 million something. Um, those are going to be our two lines. So now we have two lines that intersect at our beacon point, and we're almost done. So the positive line is going to have equation um, x minus y equals pause. And the negative line is going to have equation x plus y equals neg. Now, how do we solve for x and y? Well, this is a system of linear equations. To extract x, we can do pause plus neg over 2. And the, the y's are going to cancel out. We're going to be left with 2x. And we just divide by 2. That's why we have that. Um, and the y is going to be neg minus pause over 2. Because uh, the x's are going to cancel out. We're going to be left with 2y and then divide by 2 to get y. So those are the x and y coordinates inside code. We can do that pretty quickly. Pause plus neg over 2. Neg minus pause over 2. Now we have the x and y coordinates of the beacon. And we're pretty much done. All we have to do is compute, what is it called, the tuning frequency of this beacon, which is the x coordinate times 4 million plus y. Um, we just do that direct uh, computation directly and print out the answer. Okay, and that's it for day 15. My basic flow was to, for part one, look at intervals, you know, do that basic covering thing to see which parts are excluded. For part two, I graph things first to see a pattern um, and then realize that we have to have sets of lines that are really close and then use code to actually help me find that point. Um, fun fact, I actually graphed these points. I graphed one of these lines because I didn't find the other line and then just zoomed in to find the actual point. You can see I did my computations in a uh, Python terminal over here. So that was kind of fun, but also kind of frustrating because it took me um, like 40 minutes or something. So that was a pretty difficult puzzle. But um, I hope my explanations were able to help. If you have any questions, comments, or feedback, which I imagine there might be a bit more of due to the difficulty of today's puzzles, uh, feel free to leave that down below. And I'll see you tomorrow for day 16. Thanks for watching.